First tonight, the Noongar protesters on Harrison Island have been given notice to pack up their tents, remove their cars and leave by the end of today. The Premier's also urged them to move on, saying they're not supported by the majority of Aboriginal people. But the group's leaders say they are determined to stay until they achieve their aims of gaining sovereignty. I spoke with Noongar elder Ben Taylor earlier today. Mr Taylor, welcome to 7.30 WA. Thank you, Andrew. Mr Taylor, what are you hoping to achieve with this protest? Well, me and my people hope to achieve sovereignty over these lands because we've had no power. I'm in my 70s and, you know, for 200 years we've been downtrodden. We was only recognised as human beings in 1967 through a referendum. We were classed as fauna and kangaroo. We lived on reserves. I was born on a reserve. And out of sight, out of mind, degrading, dehumanising conditions. They knew we were there, but they kept us there, apartheid. I think most Australians are familiar with the concept of land rights. Many Australians are familiar with native title. But what does sovereignty mean to you? Well, it means that um, we can be uh, out of the republic, you know, like... There won't be anything to do with that Her Majesty the Queen. You know, as far as that flag concerns, when I see that flag, it's just it's dispossessed us of the land and taken away everything. It seems like a very radical ambition. Is it realistic? Do you think sovereignty is a realistic option yes. for your people to pursue? It is. If we have our own group therapy, therapy and our... Um, our elders run everything, you know. We have committed people. We look into high rates of imprisonment amongst my people. And the um, chronic illness of my people in hospitals and the never-ending funerals and, you know, alcohol and drug abuse, homelessness, housing evictions, three strikes and you're out. They just move on to another place. No one cares about these people. They're just hounded. Kids roaming the street. We need, re we need recreation for these kids. We need employment for our young people. The jails are over full with Aboriginal people. Throughout, right throughout Australia. How would sovereignty change that? Well, it, it would give us a right, give us a power to tell so we can have power over the government, so we can say, we want this, we want that. Are you concerned at all that not just this protest, but the protest we saw up in Kings Park, the one that we saw at the tent embassy in Canberra, seems to have um, prompted a, a real climate of division. You know, when you listen to talkback radio, read the letters to the editor, there seems to be a widening gap between the aspirations of people like yourself and many non-Indigenous Australians. Are you worried about that? Well, they must understand that my people are angry. They're oppressed. And as far as Canberra is concerned, I was there. The Prime Minister's own security guards rough handled there that day. I was watching it. I, was, I had some people guarding me, you know, kind of, I got a heart condition. And they said to me, Uncle, we don't want you to get too close, but I could see it. And, uh, you know, that was all set up by the Abbott. Tony Abbott. I was there when the girl announced it over the microphone that Mr. Abbott said he's going to tear down the um, tent embassy and he's just across the road there. Well, all the crowd just surged on that place. They were just chanting. And, you know, they was, we were celebrating 40 years. The Prime Minister could have came there. They would have welcomed We would have welcomed her there, but she never. She said she had other important things to do. She wasn't caring about blackfellas. But you've seen the pictures of that day. I mean, you were there yourself. The, the pictures of that day have painted a, an image of division. Do you, do you worry that that is setting back the cause of Indigenous people more generally? Well, that's, what's, that's what the public are going to think. But they've got to get the true story. And the media shouldn't twist things around like that, make it look as though we were to blame, because we weren't. When a Prime Minister was so close and could have walked up there where we were celebrating 40 years of that tent embassy, 
started by four men and only one was alive and he was there that day, Michael Anderson. They could have came there, we would have welcomed her. No, instead we just had her shoe. She walked out of her shoe and, and the, girl, the, the women took it back to her, taking it back to her, you know. So what happens from here on this site? You've been served, I think, with move-on notices again this morning. You... Well, I was talking to uh, Mingley, her son-in-law is a lawyer, native title lawyer, and he said they're just bluffing because this is Crown land and uh, we're entitled to stay here. They can't move us, they're just bluffing. So you're planning to stay? Yes. For how long? We'll be here for till it takes. Mr Taylor, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Andrew.